In this video, we're going to talk about how to do volume using the disk method, washer method, and the cross section methods. So first we're going to go over using the disk method. When we're doing volume of uh, an object, usually what's happening is we are rotating a um, a graph around some line. When we take a section of that graph that is a rectangle and we rotate that around some line, we end up with a cylinder shape. If you remember from geometry, the volume of a cylinder, the volume of a disk, is pi times the radius squared times the height of the disk. Well, in this case, the height of the disk since or cylinder, since it's going in this direction, is going to be this width here. So the volume of this disk is pi times the radius of the disk times this width. Well, that width is that change in x. So to see an example of this, if I take this equation, this graph right here, and revolve it around the x-axis. like this. So here is my graph 2 plus x cosine x and I'm revolving it around the x-axis to get this vase-like shape. To calculate the volume of that vase-like shape I'm going to have to cut this into an infinite number of disks or cylinders. Find the volume of those disks or cylinders and add those volumes together. To do that, that takes an integral. So to give you an example of how this works with an integral, we're going to look at this demonstration. So here we again have a graph between A and B that's been rotated around the x-axis and all of these represent different disks that we're going to find the volume of and add them together. What we need to know is the radius of these disks so we can use that formula. Well the radius is simply going to be f of x. It's the distance between f of x and the x-axis. So if we take f of x minus 0, because this is f of x equals 0, we get the length of that radius. The area of this circle here is pi times that radius squared. So the volume of the disk is going to be pi times the radius squared. We're going to add all of those disks together from A to B, so those are limits of integration. That width of our disk is that change in x, that's our dx. So this is the integral that represents the volume of those infinite number of disks added together from A to B. So to find the volume of this particular solid, We're going to take the limits of integration, negative 2 to 2, and then we're going to have pi, which I can pull out because that's a constant, times the radius squared, well, the radius was f of x,
dx. So if I put that into my calculator, you can see that y1 is 2 plus x cosine x. So I'm going to do math 9 from negative 2 to 2 of that f of x squared dx. And then I want to multiply that number by pi. To get pi r squared h. So our final answer is going to be about 52.429. This is another example of seeing that rectangle rotated around the x-axis to give us that disk and then cutting our figure into several different disks that we find the volume of and add them together. Notice this delta x, that's where our dx comes from. This is the radius, and that radius is going to be changing based on what f of x is. And then our limits of integration are from our starting point to our ending point, a to b. Again, since this is the formula for the volume of the disk, the area of the circle, times the width of the disk, and that width is our dx. So that's our change in volume of each disk. We add all those different disk volumes together to get this sum. Now, you can revolve disks around the x-axis, but you can also revolve disks around the y-axis. So then our limits of integration would be values of y, and our function here for our radius would be a y function if we were going to do rectangles that were horizontal or revolving around a vertical axis. axis. So in this example, I have the graph f of x is the square root of sine x. And so to find the volume of that revolving around the x-axis, my radius is just the square root of sine x. It's f of x. So our integral is going to go from 0 to pi, because that's our limits of integration there. And then we have pi times the radius squared dx. So that's equal to pi cosine x dx, or sine x dx, and the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, and we're evaluating that from 0 to pi. Negative cosine of pi, well cosine of pi is negative 1, negative negative 1 is 1, and then we're subtracting negative cosine of 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so that gives us 2 pi for the volume of this solid right here. That would be this graph revolved around the x-axis. Sometimes you're going to revolve around lines that are not 
the x-axis. So this is an equation, or this is an example where you're revolving around the line y equals one. So you have to consider that when you're doing the radius. This time the radius is not f of x, but it's f of x minus one, the line that it's revolving around. That's our radius length of each of our disks. So when we set up the integral, we have pi. Here we're going from negative one to one. And then it's our radius squared dx. So that's pi negative one to one two minus x squared minus one squared. Simplifying that, we have one minus x squared. So then we have to FOIL that out to get 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth dx. Taking the antiderivative, we get x minus two-thirds x cubed plus one-fifth x to the fifth. And we're evaluating that from negative one to one. So plugging those in, we get one minus two thirds plus one fifth minus, and then plugging in negative one, we get negative one plus two thirds minus one fifth. Plugging that into the calculator, we get 16 fifths, and so our final answer is going to be 16, 16 fifteenths pi. That's the volume of this solid. This graph revolved around the line y equals one. Okay, now we're gonna look at the washer method. So the difference between the disk method and the washer method is in the disk method, we get a solid cylinder. In a washer method, we get a washer type shape, and that's a circle with a hole in it. The way that we get those is we have two graphs. And so the hole is that radius from the lower graph to the line it's revolving around. And this piece is the radius, the big radius goes from the top graph to the line it's revolving around. And if you subtract those two areas of those circles, you get this area of the washer. So it's the same thing we did in geometry when we did area of a washer. You get the area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle. The area of the big circle is gonna be pi big R squared the area of the small circle is going to be pi little r squared. And so if we factor out the pi, the volume of the washer is pi times the big radius squared minus the little radius squared, and then of course our dx. So here 
we have this graph, or, which is made out of 1 plus sine 2x, that's our top graph, f of x, and g of x is our e x to the x over 2. So to see what that looks like, here's our graph. That's our f of x graph in here. And this blue is our g of x graph. And so when we revolve that around the x-axis, we get this solid in here, which is the big radius minus the small radius. And so we're getting a bunch of washers inside of here. And we can see that we get that volume by taking the limits of integration here. This is the big radius, f of x. And since we're revolving around the x-axis, we're minus 0, g of x minus 0. Another way to look at how this works for washers is if we have these two graphs, we're going to break that up into partitions, into those rectangular partitions, and generate a washer for each one of those partitions. So this is what the washer is going to look like for this particular partition. So notice we have the big circle that whose radius goes all the way from here to here, and we had the small circle whose radius went all the way from here to here. And then we subtract the areas of those circles to get the area of the washer. Same thing's happening in this case. We get this shape to get those washers and the volume is going to be all of those washers added together. So the size of our hole gets bigger as we go along. And so we get bigger um, holes in our washer as we go through here and smaller holes as we go down that way. So this is the formula for finding using the washer method. You use the washer method when if you're revolving around a line that the one if you have more than one equation that one of them does not go all the way to that line so that's going to cause that hole and then you know to use the washer method there so here for finding the volume of this solid right here which is created by revolving this around the x-axis. We first need to figure out what's our top graph. So that's our square root of x. That's going to give us our big R. So big R is the square root of x. Then our small r is going to be that bottom graph, which is y equals x squared. And so when we set up our integral, we have pi, and then we're going from 0 to 1, because they intersect at 1. I set square root of x equal to x squared, and then I square both sides. I'm going to get x equals 1 and x equals 0 when I set those equal to each other. 
So then we set this up, we're going to take big R squared minus little r squared and all that times dx. So simplifying that, square root of x squared is just x, and then x squared squared is x to the fourth. Taking the antiderivative, we get 1 half x squared minus 1 fifth x to the fifth, and we're evaluating that from 0 to 1. So we're just plugging in the 1, because plugging in 0 gives us 0. We have 1 half minus 1 fifth, going back to the calculator, you can see 1 half minus 1 fifth is 3 tenths, so then we have 3 tenths pi. Now, so far, everything we've done has been revolving around a horizontal line, either the x-axis or we had the horizontal line y equals 1 in one of those examples. In the next example, we're going to look at what happens when we revolve around a vertical axis, and we have to integrate with respect to y. So in this problem here, we have to integrate with respect to y because we're revolving around the y-axis. So it means our rectangles are horizontal. So that means we need to change this equation right here, solving for x. So we get x equals the square root of y minus 1. Now in this particular problem, we're going to have to use two integrals. In the first integral, we have this radius where it's just this line x equals 1 so big R is going to be 1 and there's really only one R there there's no little r so in that first from here 0 to 1 from y equals 0 to y equals 1 we really are just using the disk method there's no whole from 1 to 2, y equals 1 to y equals 2, we have to use the washer method. Our big R is still 1, but our little r is going to be the square root of y minus 1. Alright, so setting up our first integral, we get pi and we're going from 0 to 1 for the y values. And so then we're just going to do r squared, which is just 1 squared dy. Our second integral is the washer method. So that's 1 to 2, big R squared minus little r squared. dy. So this first integral is pi and then the antiderivative of dy is y integrating that from 0 to 1 and then we have pi and we have dy again Oh, we have to simplify this. Sorry, so this simplifies to 1 minus Oops, 
two and the square root of y minus one. Sorry about that. So one minus y minus one squared, or that was already squared, which is two minus y. So the antiderivative of two is two y. The antiderivative of y is one half y squared. And we're evaluating this one from one to two. So plugging that part in, we have one, because zero is just zero. And then plugging this part in, we have four minus two for that one we plug two in. And when we plug one in, we get two minus one half. Factoring out the pi and doing all this, we go to the calculator gives us three halves. So this is going to be three halves pi. All right, the last way to do volume that we're going to look at is called the cross section method. So in the cross section method, what's happening is we have some kind of base that is made out of some graph that we have that's the base of our solid that we're trying to find the volume of and then from that base coming up are different kinds of cross sections like squares rectangles triangles semicircles so what you need to do is those are all going to be pyramids so when you do the volume of a pyramid it's the area of the base times the height and that height is your dx. So what you're doing is you're figuring out the area of the base in terms of x, and then to so the area of your cross section, I'm sorry, which is the base of your pyramid. So you're finding the area of that cross section in terms of x, and then using that times dx and doing the integral for your limits of integration there. If you're perpendicular to the y-axis, then you're gonna have to use y equations. Those are going to be horizontal rectangles. So here I'm going to show you what this looks like. In this particular one, it was asking us to take this figure and make our cross sections semicircles. So you can see we've got this graph here. That's the base of our solid. We've got semicircles here, and I have all of these semicircles that are actually pyramids with bases of semicircles. So if I can find the area of that semicircle with respect to x and multiply it by the dx and add all of those pyramid volumes together, I get the volume of this entire solid right here. So to do that, I'm going to find the area of the semicircle. An area of a semicircle is one half pi r squared. Well, the diameters of those semicircles are f of x minus g of x. If we go back to this, we can see that the diameters go all the way between f of x and g of x. So that means that the radius is half of that. So 
So the area in terms of x is going to be 1 half pi times that radius squared. Well, 1 half squared is 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth pi. And then we have this f of x minus g of x squared left over. So our integral is going to be the area of that semi of those semicircles with respect to x. I'm going to pull out the 1 eighth pi. So we're going to go now. For the limits of integration, we need to go from 0 to this intersection right here. So I'm going to go back to the calculator to figure out the intersection. In my calculator, I have put the f of x as y2 and g of x as y1, and I want to know where those intersect. So if I graph those two and then I'm going to change my window to be from 0 to about 1.5 because I know it's somewhere in there and change my y window 0 to 2 so I graph that, that gives me that graph that we've been looking for. And I want to calculate that intersection. So I'm gonna go close to the intersection. I want the intersection of that graph and that graph. And then I need to store that. So I'm gonna store that. store that as A. All right, so there's that intersection there. So I want that intersection of A, I'm going to write that down, or A in our calculator is approximately 1.13569 So we're going from 0 to A and then we have this f of x minus g of x squared dx. So we'll put that in the calculator. So we have 1 eighth pi math 9 0 to a and then I had those in y2 minus y3 and then we have to square that dx gives us 0 
for the volume of this solid here. So some other examples of things that we can do here. In this particular one, this asks us to make our cross sections rectangles with a height of five. So that integral is gonna look like the area of a rectangle is base times height. The height is five. The base is going to be that f of x times g of minus g of x and so our integral is going to be 0 to a 5 times f of x minus g of x dx Putting that into the calculator gives you approximately 0 0.19775. Here we're using squares. So the area of a square is side squared. Side of the square, because they're perpendicular to the x-axis, is just f of x minus g of x. So my integral is going to be 0 to a f of x minus g of x squared dx. Putting that into the calculator gives us approximately Sorry, this answer should have been two point one four six. This answer is zero point. One nine seven seven five. This one, if we're doing rectangles with the height twice the width, then we're going to have area again is base times height because they're rectangles. Our base is going to be f of x minus g of x, and our height is going to be twice that. So our integral is going to be 0 to a, and then we have 2 times f of x minus g of x squared, since we're multiplying those two together, dx, and that is approximately 0 0.3955. If we're going to use isosceles triangles, where the hypotenuse is the base. So here's our isosceles triangles. So those are 45, 45, 90 triangles. This side is what's on the base. So that's our f of x minus g of x. So if l squared root 2 equals f of x minus g of x, then l equals f of x minus g of x over the square root of 2. And the area of this, equal, of this isosceles triangle is 1 half l squared. So that's going to be 1 half f of x minus g of x
over the square root of 2 squared. So 1 over the square root of 2 squared is 1. Um, half and then one half times one half is one fourth and then we have our f of x minus g of x quantity squared so when we put that into the integral we have one fourth that we can pull out zero to a f of x minus g of x quantity squared dx putting that in the calculator gives us approximately 0 0.0494